Oh, it is in place. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Sorry, we're about nine minutes behind, but it's so nice to see all of you. I see that we have 40 participants. So I wanted to take a little time first to, to welcome everybody, and hopefully, everybody's enjoying the little signs of spring that makes us all really happy with daffodils and tulips. And I'm going to try it today just to, because we have new board members too, and we're going to be interviewing. A, possible new board members to it to just go over what our protocol for for our meetings are for as far as public comments because we have a lot of people today too so uh, to to ensure that the board has time to conduct its business uh, the board is going to adhere to that 1.5 uh, you know one minute and a half for everybody that has a comment if we don't have enough time at the beginning of the meeting there is a time allowed at the at the end of the meeting also for public comment. Um, as we start the, the, the meeting today, I have been you know, thinking a lot about our commitment to creating a safe space for all of us to have difficult conversations and important conversations. And also how proud I was for us to have that civil discourse through last year. And also that shows to our kids, you know, ways to be uh, civil and still have important conversations. So I wanna, uh, usually we do this just for public uh, forums, but I just wanna remind everybody to stay fully present, to tame the technology and I'll try to do my best. I've just been trying to help one of our more members be able to join, but I pass that to other two people. Please respect other story and perceptions uh, tonight. Assume, assume best intention, intentions, ask wondering questions, uh, recognize that we need each other uh, be kind. There's no wrong questions. So board members, and and is is the the meeting of the board and the public is invited to the meeting. We have a lot of work to do tonight, so we appreciate you joining us today. And with that, I'm gonna welcome our guests. And Floor? yeah, Floor. may Floor. I make a motion first? Oh, it, it, sorry, uh, Jonas. Yeah, I was so excited here. Let's uh, let's do that first. Right. Uh, so I would move that the board make a specific finding that premature public knowledge regarding attorney-client privilege documents received from the district's legal counsel would clearly pace, place the district at a substantial disadvantage. Thank you, Jonas. Could I have a second? And this for the clarity of the public is from our executive session. I'll second. second. Oh. <clears throat> Lindy. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any oppose? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, Jonas, for keeping me honest. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, open for public comments. Please raise your hand if you have a public comment. Hmm. Am I missing? Hmm. I don't see any hands up. Oh, I see Meg. Anybody else that? Okay, Meg, go ahead. Oh, I'm starting to see them up. All right. <laughs> Great, thank you, Flora, and welcome everyone. Um, thanks for um, having us. Um, my name is Meg Allison. I'm the one of the U32 librarians, and I'm here to support our students from GLAM who are gonna be presenting later on raising the progress pride flag at U32. Um, I love that this has been a youth led movement to make our school and district more inclusive and equitable. Um, it's a joy to work with students who are committed um, to really digging into these difficult, hard conversations um, uh, about addressing ignorance and hate and bias um, in our school district. And I think the progress pride flag will be an amazing symbol for our students and our families, and most especially our, stu our marginalized students um, so that they feel seen and heard and that we recommit ourselves to ensuring that our curriculum, our policies and our practices are as inclusive as possible. Um, so I'm here to support um, our students. 
I can't wait to hear from them later. Thank you. Thank you so much, Meg. I'm going to just see Edith. Hi, Edith. Are you here for yeah, are you here for the flag? Yes. Uh, I yeah. want to say so um, you mind I, it, the, sorry to interrupt you. Do you mind? I we we do have it if and I'm just gonna give you the option. We do have it as part of our agenda, and I would love for you to be part of that. And I was gonna ask Meg about that too. Uh, or you can do the comment right now if you don't want to sit through the first part of our agenda. Uh, what would be your preference? I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. And anybody else that is here for the flag, we we wanted to honor that time in the in the agenda. So if you if, if any student that is here for the flag, please uh, sit tight, and we would love to hear you as we discuss that part of the agenda. Yes. Okay. So. Seeing no other hands up, unless I'm missing somebody and I don't see a lot of cameras on. <laughs> Am I missing anything? No. We, okay, we're gonna go into the agenda revisions. Any agenda revisions by board members? Any changes in Jen? Any changes? That, no, okay. So let's jump right in into student report 4.1. I saw Maya before. There you are. Well done. Hi. Uh, so I don't think Anne is here today because she wasn't okay. feeling well. So I will cover it. Um, all right. To start off, just like a wrap up of the past month, we had the Drowsy Chaperone show, which I think you guys knew about. Uh, it was the first in-person show in two years after COVID. And we're hoping to get three shows next year and bring it back to normal. Uh, also, right now is the like college season, SAT season, AP test season. So all the juniors and seniors are a little bit stressed about that, but <laughs> they're getting through it. There's a lot of support from the school I know as well. Uh, let's see, we have sports are starting up, clubs. I know GLAM is here today. I'm part of GLAM. Seeking Social Justice has also been doing a lot of good work. We had a vigil for Ukraine um, the week before break. and Currently, there's a fundraiser going on at the school, and also it's been spread across social media to raise money for Doctors Without Borders, and that will also be going directly to Ukraine to help out with that. Um, and masks has also been, I, I know I bring this up every meeting, but it's been a big thing at schools. It's the mask man has been going on and off, and I know a lot of the students, some are frustrated, but a lot of students understand with um, what's been going on with the high transmission rate that we should bring it back. And it's kind of just a test period. And from those who I've talked to, they understand that. And I haven't seen much protest for wearing masks lately. And that's really about it for now. Thank you, Maya. Any questions? from board members. Natasha. Not a question, but a comment. I was able to go see the Stage 32 production. And as a former Stage 32 student, it was really exciting to be back in the auditorium seeing the amazing talent that our students possess. And I'm really excited to see what they're gonna to continue to do moving forward with the program. Yeah, thank you. We got a lot of good feedback from the show. A lot of people were super excited to be back in the theater. Thank you, Maya. I, I was able to watch the vigil just in the recorded part that was posted and I that was really wonderful to, to see. So congratulations to all of you and thank you for caring so much. Um, any other board members, comments or questions? I don't see any hands up. So I'm gonna pass it on to, to Jen, to, to the superintendent reports. Great, thank you, Floor. So um, first I wanted to share with you a COVID-19 update. Uh, it was gratifying to hear what Maya had to say, um, just about masking in general as a way that we're taking care of um, ourselves in our school community overall. Um, I know that sometimes some of the 
mostly we have been hearing gratitude for that decision that we made that you supported through the MOU. We have heard some criticism. Some of the criticism is just that it changes week by week. For me, I frame it as a the CDC metric being the stable metric. I'm gonna reinforce that message in the community letter tomorrow, just to bring some more clarity to that so that the community um, who has questions can better understand that. Um, our numbers are up, but they're only the numbers that people are reporting to us. So we know that um, they're not 100% they're not accurate right now. We did have a number of cases prior to April break and some reported during and since April break. As you know, we um, had a lot of test kits and we offered to have families come and pick them up. And it, um, we heard that about a hundred or so test kits were picked up at central office during the break. Um, and I think that the other thing I'll report is that prior to April break, the um, school nurses received a memo from the Vermont Department of Health um, saying a couple of things that we expect to happen at some point, although there have been there has not been a change or progress quite yet as of when Marie and I touched base this afternoon. Um, but we expect that um, if there are outbreaks, which is defined as three or more um, cases in a particular school, that we'll have a mechanism to report those. That there is no formal mechanism or uh, or even method to, to report a suspected outbreak or an outbreak. We also have been informed that um, we're supposed to be reporting soon when the mechanism is ready, um, any positive results from at home tests. We are not doing that right now and we don't know what that's gonna look like. And we, know, and we are you know, continuing to ask our families to let us know that so, so that we can track the data, but I think more will come um, as we learn more from the Vermont Department of Health. And I know that they are working on their uh, metric as well, but I, I don't know that it's been fully updated quite yet. Um, so that's the piece around COVID. You all had asked for an update also just about um, some school staff climate. I sent an email to the staff right before April break when I sent the community letter asking for some input, knowing that this year has been um, hard and exhausting and this stretch is obviously a long stretch. I heard from two folks, which I think I was excited, but I also think only hearing from two was probably an indication of how tired people were. Um, just saying that they've appreciated um, what their school has done. Um, and another person saying how impressed they've been with the quality of student work, um, including, you all know, I sent to you um, some of our examples of student work from the High School History Day. Um, so just expressions of, um, of gratitude and um, appreciation for the, the rigor and depth of student work um, and overwhelming um, just uh, statements of exhaustion. This school year has been hard for everybody. Um, all of us um, in all of our roles uh, are tired, and that has definitely been a key part of the message, um, including a message that you all had received from the Educator Association um, earlier today as well. So um, that is uh, what I have to report on staff climate. I think the other thing that I want to report um, to you really as a preview is just to let you know as well that um, that in part we've learned that um, more contact with our students um, has been helpful. So there is a, a schedule change in the works for next year at U32. And I want to give you a little bit of a preview. Um, I think the technical term is like a cascading or a waterfall um, schedule, which means that on any one day, five, five classes will meet on any one day, although students at the high school level will be taking eight classes. Um, and it also means that the length of those classes uh, will be a little bit shorter, about 60 minutes for those high school classes. The schedule also allows um, middle school core classes to meet four times a week. 
let me back up. Um, this schedule allows our high school classes to consistently meet three times a week. Right now, um, for those of you who, who are familiar with a, a U32 schedule, you know that it alternates. It's sort of an AB block schedule. So one week students meet twice a week and the next week they meet three times a week. This schedule allows um, 60 minute classes. They, they'd all meet three times a week teacher advisory every day, um, call back every day. It also means that the bus schedule would change a little bit and the buses would depart at 2.50. This year they depart at 2.55. Um, that actually will be helpful because uh, we have occasionally continued to experience some glitches with the buses running um, for, for departure times that um, are timely at the elementary schools. So um, if you're interested in, in sort of more specifics down the line, um, I'm happy to, to prepare a more thorough report with the help from my U32 colleagues as well. Um, and that is it. I know Maria is here. So I would say if you have any questions um, or comments or concerns related to COVID, um, Maria and I would invite you to share those with us. Any questions from board members? COVID. I don't, I don't, I don't hear any. So questions on, on the other part of Jen's report, not associated with COVID. Um, okay. Jen, that was that was great. So uh, let you continue. <laughs> Okay, so the next part of the report is about the last day of school. Um, I included in the packet for you all, all the recommendation for the last day of school. This was um, oh, this was a, a, a labor of um, deep scrutiny and work to come up with this recommendation. Ultimately, um, my recommendation is that our elementary students um, go through school um, for a half day through uh, Tuesday, Jan, uh, June 21st, uh, U32 would be June 22nd. Um, and that the staff days uh, end um, as I wrote in that memo. So um, the last day for elementary teachers would be Wednesday, June 22nd. The last day for U32 teachers would be Friday, June 24th. Our paraeducators, elementaries would work a half day on Wednesday, the 22nd. U32 a half day through Friday the 24th. And our food service employees would work their last day for elementary would be the 21st and U32 would be the 23rd. That would mean that everybody would work a day less than contracted. Um, it means that uh, I'm also recommending that for folks who are year round and, and sort of on a different schedule that the board consider providing an additional paid vacation day for those folks. Um, I know that this decision uh, is um, one that uh, you've heard some concerns about through the association letter. Um, I just want to say that I, I have scrutinized, I've looked around at other um, districts, I've done a lot of work, and this is the one that I feel is the most student-centered decision. So if there are questions or concerns, um, I am happy to answer them. Board members, let's open this conversation in, okay, Diane and Ursula after. Um, so I just, one of the questions that was raised and I, I do know that it has been done by other uh, districts uh, was about a waiver for those remote learning days. Um, so can you explain the decision behind not, not applying for that? Yeah, so I did apply for a waiver. Um, so let, let me make that really clear. Here's what happened, and this is where I think some of the confusion is. Our students go 180 days. The Agency of Education asked us to put in waivers for COVID-related days prior to February break. So at that time, on the 18th of February, I applied for a waiver. I applied for a day um, related to COVID, 
Um, for U32, there were two other days, the staff shortage day, the water main break day. And for East Montpelier and Berlin, those days when they were learning at home, which the Agency of Education does not recognize as days of student attendance. I based it on 180 days because our calendar is 180 student days, which meant we weren't below 175 days. And you only need a waiver for 175 days. I created a very, very long narrative as well to explain all of that to the Agency of Education. On March 17th, they granted the calendar waiver request, even though we didn't need it. Over April break, I double checked with the Agency of Education to, um, to see what would happen if the last student day were a day other than the one that I was suggesting, which meant that East Montpelier and Berlin would dip below the 175 days. And they have assured me that based on every, everything else that they have received, that the, the waiver would be granted. I haven't had to officially submit it to go under 175 days because we're not there right now. But I do have that assurance, should we need it, that it will be granted. And I did my due diligence thoroughly prior to February break based on the 180 days. Does that answer your question, Diane? Yeah, uh, kind of, but I got a little confused and I apologize because I know you, you've you got a lot of detail. So currently with the days that you're uh, recommending be the last days, that is that 180 days or is that 175? So right now, if we go with the dates that I recommended, which is for the elementary schools, um, Tuesday, June 21st, it means that Doty, um, let me get this right. It means that Doty, Romney, Callis students would go 179 days. Um, and it would mean that East Montpelier would go 175 days and Berlin 176. I wanna be clear that we had rigorous from learning from home opportunities during those days. Our teachers, our food service and our paraeducators were working. If you go with a recommendation that I'm making, I don't need to request a waiver because we're at 175 days. If you go below that, um, or shorten it, then I then I would need to request a waiver. And that's where I did the outreach to ensure that indeed it would be granted. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Diane. Ursula? With the proposal that was outlined in this letter, because we had a proposed end date of June 16th, I think, half day, and are the teachers going to revise their final lesson plans? Like we've been getting emails about like, at least for my daughter, like they're on their final unit for language arts. Um, are they gonna be revising their lesson plans to extend those three extra days? Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, I would, I, yes. I mean, the, the contingency days have been in the calendar and I would trust that our teachers will maximize the use of those days as, as best they could to make, you know, to make them worthwhile days for our kids, for sure. They do that every day. So um, I, I have faith in our teachers to maximize the learning opportunities for our kids. Thanks, Ursula. Uh, Maggie? Jen, I'm wondering if you can elaborate more on the um, academic value and, and uh, socialization as well of extending for those additional days when we're hearing um, some real dissatisfaction with this plan from educators. I mean, I, I can tell you what I believe. I believe that a student-centered decision is having our students in school um, where, you know, one of our most finite resources, I think, is time. We've been talking about that throughout the budget process as well, that it's not just resource allocation, it's time. Um, this honors the time and the commitments that 
we have made to our students and families. It's been part of the contingency days in the calendar from um, the very beginning, you know, since for a year. Um, it's more days of access to universal meals and has allows us to have as many student days as possible while also being equitable across the board for our staff. So. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, Daniel? Yeah, thanks. Um, Jen, I was just wondering if you could speak to the, the discrepancy between our district and that of other districts as you see it. And I, I guess I have a guess as to where it lies, but if just giving you the opportunity to respond to that piece of, of the objections raised by the, um, by the union. Yeah, so earlier in April, um, I had a monthly regional meeting with the superintendents and we were starting to talk about this because this is the time of the year when it happens. And, um, and, and every other district that has made the determination around us is finishing by June 17th. That is absolutely true. Um, what's also true is that in almost all of those cases, their uh, teacher year or student year is fewer days than ours. Our teacher year is 190 days or up to 190 days. That was a nuance that I, for the sake of parallel structure wrote, but if I had quoted the negotiated agreement, it does say up to 190 days. I apologize for that confusion. Um, but our contract and our contract say 190 days for teachers. Our students go 180 days by our calendars. There are, all, there are neighboring districts where, for example, they, their typical year is 175 student days and 185 teacher days, or um, 177 days and 185, or 178 and 188. There are also districts around us that had fewer inclement weather days than we did. So, Districts like Barry or Montpelier Roxbury, for example, um, aren't tapped in at the same um, in the same way that we are with our more rural geography. So we missed a number of days. So the fact that we missed so many days, coupled with the fact that our contract year is longer and our student year is longer, is what's sort of leading us to into that next week, which is different than many of our neighbors. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Daniel. Any other questions? Uh, Natasha and then Ursula, you're on deck. Yeah, this is it's a, just a clarifying question, um, maybe a silly question. So here in the state of Vermont, even though we are a unified district, they count days separately for each school, not collectively. The student attendance days to count in a school, you have to have uh, 51 percent of students in physically present in the building so we've historically had years when um, for example there was a year when there was no power at Doty this was that was back in 2017-18 and Doty went an additional day to have that counted okay so schools are so they are counted separately they're not it's we don't look at like all of our elementary school students collectively. okay in my previous state, they did look at it that way. So if a school was closed, it did not impact the district as a whole. So thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Um, Jen, you were just talking about other districts around us and I'm curious because the letter that we got talked about the difference in us ending not the same time as other districts around us and it potentially impacting teachers for childcare, et cetera. In the past, have we typically ended at the same time as other districts around us? Do you know? Or has there been a discrepancy? You know, there's, it, we're, we're fairly common across the board in general because all of us have to have 175 days that are in common if, with, with the neighbors that send to the Central Vermont Career Center. There are always some nuances, not unlike this year because of the difference in the length of the year that our students and teachers go um, and because of the difference in impact 
again, usually around transportation, snow days, right? Um, Montpelier, especially before Montpelier was Montpelier Roxbury, almost never had a snow day because they had limited buses and their students walked. And some, there was one day I remember they had a snow day because the sidewalks weren't shoveled, but the roads were okay, right? So there are always those variations. Um, we're close, but it's never, never cute, like totally aligned. This, this seems further off, but I, I don't quote me on that, right? I'm saying anecdotally um, to be a week difference, but I, I would need to go back and do more research to tell you exactly. I didn't, I didn't look into that question in preparation for this meeting. McKaylin. Um, I hope you guys can hear me okay. My Wi-Fi is being wonky, which is why I turned off my video. Um, Jen, this is kind of another precedent question, so I don't know if you'll really have um, an answer, but is there precedent to kind of say, oh, even though we want 180, we're going to accept fewer than that and kind of ignore our contingency days? Um, as it seems some people might be requesting, like, is there a precedent there? And if not, it seems like then we're setting, pre if we do that, we set precedent going forward that those contingency days don't really mean anything. And then, you know, then the question becomes, why is our school calendar set of 180 days? Um, so, which I imagine is because as you were saying, time is our greatest resource. So we value those days. Yeah, so I gathered the information uh, with um, with help from my colleagues at Central Office here on the past five day, five years, and I can share that with you. So last year we had 174 student days. That was uh, COVID. We all started late, and the state had made the requirement 170 instead of 175. The last day was June 17th, and our teachers, you all as a board, waived the teacher day. So our teachers went till June 18th, and they went 189 of the 190 days. In 2019-2020, our kids went 175 days. The last day was June 11th, so that was the spring of 2020 when we were all remote. Oh, and, um, and then we went, our teachers went 190 days um, that year. 2018, 2019, um, our kids went 180 days at the elementary, U32 kids went 178. The last day was June 21st. Our teachers went 190 days. The last day for elementary was June 24th. The last day for U32 teachers was June 26th. Elementary kids had five snow days that year and U32 had seven due to water main breaks and the board dis dismissed students on the same day. In 2017, 2018, our kids went 180 days. The last day was June 20th. Doty had to go till June 21st because of the power day. And our teachers went 190 days. Their last day was June 21st. Doty teachers last day was June 22nd. And then the last day I looked into was 2016, 2017. All of our kids went 180 days. They ended on June 20th. Our teachers went 190 days. They ended on June 21st. There were four snow days and nothing was waived. Thank you. So it seems like prior to COVID, we really pretty much stuck to the 180 days. So thank you for right. that. You're welcome. Jonathan and then Maggie. Yeah, I, I just, um... I think that, I mean, clearly, you know, we've been pretty consistent with those attendance days and, you know, the number of, you know, the days that the kids are in school and the teachers likewise. And I think, you know, we're, we're at, we're at the sort of the tail end, hopefully of this, uh, you know, COVID situation. And so with that in mind, I don't think it's unreasonable for, um, I mean, I understand what, what the teachers are saying. I understand the justification and the reasons for wanting to maximize um, student time in class too. Yes, there's social reasons, educational region, reasons, of course. But I don't, I don't think that it's that given the last two years and the work that everybody has done, I think there's certainly a fair argument to be made that allowing the teachers to have a slightly shorter school year on the end of this thing is really not so bad. 
And quite frankly, um, yes, time is the most valuable thing we have, but that also includes time to, um, you know, uh, re regroup and time to take care of yourself and have maybe a little less time to work for a bit of time. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, I sorry, Jonathan. I've been seeing for Jonas keeps putting his hand up, but not it's technology. I also just Jonas. Before you speak, I want to take a minute to just say we we still are having, uh, and I just want to say this for some some teachers or some community members that were hoping to join. Uh, we're working as fast as we can. Mark uh, redid the login to let people in. I'm still getting texts from people that are waiting that the host to start the meeting. So I just want to acknowledge that. So uh, go ahead, Jonas, and ask your question, and then you can go, Maggie, because you had one before. Is that okay? okay. And, and Lisa Stout, and are you in the Maggie. room? Oh, my God. Oh. And I see that Chris wants to speak. Uh, Chris, you can go after yeah. Maggie. Okay, hold on yes, a minute. Thank you very much. I am here. Sorry. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and Lisa's here, too. She thank you, Lisa. I will send you my notes. Go ahead, Jonas. That was my question. I've been keeping a minute, so I was wondering if Lisa was here so I could send her my notes. Oh, so yeah, she's finally made it. We're having so many tech problems. Okay, Maggie, go ahead. Okay, so I'm I don't know um, whether there's clear data that shows that this extra five days that our school district is affording students and is part of the teacher expectation and staff expectation um, that there's data that indicates that this is resulting in improved performance. Are there indicators? Is is uh, in as, um, someone who's worked in our local schools, as kids have gone through the local schools, has been a student myself. Um, I I hear that every day is valuable, but I also have concerns that there's going to be um, a demoralized workforce who may not um, entirely feel that enthusiasm for those last couple of days and extending an extra week um, just concerns me about whether those are gonna be filler days or whether they're actually going to be meaningful academic days. Certainly from a social standpoint, can see the value um, and then, of course, there are going to be a lot of families who will elect, even though the calendar clearly states, here's the time frame, and any of us who use the calendar as a reference, you don't plan something until we're through those contingency days, um, if you want to be sure your child attends school. But I, I, those are my, my two questions. Are there performance indicators? And would we be expecting a much lower student participation by continuing for those additional three days? Jen, do you want to address that and then, or do you want me? Um, either way, Fleur, I, I'll, I'll start. Um, I don't have anything that measures the, you know, the, the quality or the difference that a few days at the end of the year make. The markers that we have are based on student performance across the board. Um, I would say, like I said earlier, um, I believe that our teachers will maximize the time that they have for the best outcomes for our students. Um, and I think the other thing that I would say is that um, I also don't have at my fingertips the attendance data. I do know that those the calendar has been in place for the past year. And I also know that we have negotiated agreements that specify um, the, the up to a certain amounts of time in the teacher's agreement. Again, it says up to 190 days in the ESP agreement and the food service agreement. It says 183 days for our, for our para educators and 180 days for our food service employees. Thanks, Jen. Uh, Jonas? Sorry, I think Chris wanted to go. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Uh, Chris? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so I, I have to say that I did not like the tone of the memo because um, I thought it was 
more like a hectoring tone, which which I just I didn't like. I, I appreciate the sentiments of the tone of the memorandum, but not the tone. Um, Jen, can you tell us whether there is this sense of fatigue that is being reported to uh, the leadership team um, uh, across the district? Whether because we we've, we've been hearing about it that people are overstretched. Uh, and um, are are really tired. Uh, we're at the end of a two-year process, uh, which has been um, really difficult um, for everyone, including the administration. And so, I'm wondering if that is something that you that is a uh, a topic of conversation at the leadership team. Um, and then, let me ask a, a number of different questions. You can answer them all at the same time. Um, and the other is. Um, is there a negative in terms of students uh, if school ended on the 17th? And is that something that would apply uniformly across the district? Because um, I understood you to say that if we'd requested a waiver, you thought it would be granted. Uh, and and then another, another question is, would it be beneficial for the administration uh, if uh, school ended on June 17th. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Those were, did you write them down, Jen? <laughs> I think I got them. Okay. Go um, okay. So in terms of the, um, the sort of tired, um, yes, I think it is very real. I think it's not just in Washington Center. I think it's across the state and across the nation. We, we're tired. This is hard. I think all of us are working under lots of stress and showing up. Uh, conditions change. And, um, and in our system, especially, I think I've reported almost every single board meeting to you all about vacancies that we have in this district, how we have no very few substitutes, and how we're all helping each other out and covering as best we can, it's generous and it's wonderful and it's exhausting. So yes, when our teachers and our employees say they're tired, I believe them, our administrators are tired, I'm exhausted. So yes, we're tired. Um, Friday, June 17th, um, Chris, if I understood your question, I think that um, you meant the implication for student days. And if the last, student day was Friday, June 17th, that would mean students at Callis, Doty, and Rumney would have been in school um, for 177 days. It would mean for Berlin and East Montpelier, although we think they were in learning from home, it would mean Berlin would be 174 days. East Montpelier would be 173 days from the beginning of the year, and I would need to request a waiver, which again, I have every indication would be granted. I'm not worried about that at all. And it would mean that U32 students, um, barring no more water main breaks or anything else, would be in school for 175 days, and that would not require a, um, a break or a, um, a waiver. In terms of the administration, I mean, I, I don't know how to answer that question. I think that, um, you know, we're making decisions that are student centered. Uh, and, and I told you sort of my thinking behind that. I, I mean, I definitely consulted the principals and I, I have to tell you all, I mean, sincerely, when I did the math and I put it out there and I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> June 24th or June 26th, I know that it's late and um, and I and I know that we're tired and I I it's the recommendation that I'm making when I weigh everything, everything across the board. It's it's where I am right now with the deepest empathy and uh, and quite frankly nervousness about continuing to, to to say it when I know our teachers are tired. But that's where I am right now. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Uh, Jonas, and then um, Lindsay, and then I'll let Diane go, just because you went already, Diane, okay? Go ahead, Jonas. Uh, so, uh, Jen, everything that you've said uh, and, you know, the, the communication that you sent out um, is centered around the fact that this is, this is a, a, at the 
the primary interest here is the student-centered decision, right? And it is better for kids to be in school than to be missing school. You know, we have 180 days. We don't always use those 180 days, um, but that's that's what our that's what our contracts are. That's what you know. That's what our calendar says. That's what we approved last year. Um, I think that there is also a you know a real. In, I think everybody has a real interest in staff equity, right? So if we're going to request, um, you know, waiver days from one school, do we need to request them from all the other schools? Which would mean I think uh, East Montpelier going under 175 right, which I don't think is great. And then do you have teachers, you know, some teachers and some staff who are, you know, working longer than others? Do you keep staff in the building, you know, just to have them in the building to have a, a, a work day there? I've heard Jen explain her decision and her recommendation a number of times uh, over the last few weeks, and it never gets less complicated. There are a lot of moving parts here. Um, there are a lot of equities to balance. Um, and I think that this, I, I, I think this recommendation lands on the side of students in classrooms, an equitable length of the year for teachers and staff, um, while not going to 180 days and while, you know, reducing the length of that staff year by one day as we did last year. So I, I think I think this is making the best of a very complex and difficult situation where there's never going to be a perfect outcome. Um, so I, I'll support this while also acknowledging the strain and the anxiety and the grind of this school year for which we are all grateful to the teachers and staff. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, Lindy? Yeah, I have to second Chris's opinion about the tone. But other than that, um, what I wanted to say when Jonas was speaking, the Berlin and East Montpelier people, even though the AOE didn't recognize them, those teachers worked on those remote days. And we'd been doing Zoom through um, all of the COVID. And then all of a sudden they say, oh, sorry, that's over. It doesn't count. And the families and the teachers participated in those days. So those students in my mind are not going fewer days because that remote time, I felt I felt that was another one of those little punch in the guts from AOE that I did not appreciate very much. Um, if everyone ended on the 17th, there's some inequity involved, yes. Uh, but I'm also looking at, I wrote myself some notes and now the cat sat on them. Um, what the surrounding towns are doing is important in Vermont, and it's one of the reasons I've always felt we need a statewide calendar, because it would make things a lot easier for everyone, for PD days, for all kinds of statewide stuff we could do, but that's a totally different subject. Um, as far as working harder, I also am a teacher in another district, and I've been a building sub more times than, and not as many as other people. And everyone has done that across the state. And that's not what I got in education to be, but you step up and you do what has to be done. And people are working harder. I, I, it's this, I do not ever wanna go against something that Jen put this much work into, because if anyone has stepped up to the plate this year, I just have to say it's Jen. And she has made this year so much, so done, well done. And I know she put her heart and soul into this and she didn't do it to upset people or say, you know, you have to work your exact hours. But I do in looking at other districts, which I did, she did. I don't see anybody going into that next week. Um, there may be, but I didn't see it. And I think that will be hard on our staff. And I also think families will have already signed up kids for camps or other things, or just said, well, I'm not going to send you to school. So I'm not sure how, how valuable the experience would be. But I, I just, I'm listening to it all and felt I had to especially say about the remote days for East Montpelier and Berlin, that that 
those teachers did work those days, so they'd be working even more days. Um, and there's not going to be equity as far as the days worked. I mean, you're trying, <laughs> you, you tried, but it's, it's just a very um, unusual situation that I hope we never have to face again. Thank you, Lindy. Uh, Diane, go ahead and ask your question. And then I wanna make sure that there's no other board members that haven't spoken. I believe everybody has had a chance. Jonas, you can go next and then. Yeah, I just, you know, I felt that I needed to say something as the person who generally talks about staff appreciation. Um, again, completely respect and agree with what Lindy said, Jen, about the work that you've put into this and that you at central office. Um, and, but I also, for myself, would feel disingenuous if I didn't bring up the fact that I, I am eager to show appreciation but then when I'm hearing how stressed and that. So to me, that that's the one thing that it raises to me that um, wondering about, could we make it possible to not go into that next week as a sign of that appreciation? The other concern I have about this is that it has kids going to school on Juneteenth. And so as we have put forward that we really feel very strongly about that, uh, that worries me that that would be in the equation. So I just wanted to make that, that statement. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Jonas? Uh, Jen, is it the case that uh, for East Montpelier in Berlin, uh, when the teachers and staff worked those, you know, learning at home days, um, that those days are counted as days worked for those staff? Yeah. That's yeah. not, that, not that they work for free those days. And That's if, I'm sorry, Jonas. No, th thank you for that, that, that yes. Is it also the case that if we were going to have the last day on the 17th, um, would we have teachers continue working up to the contractual, you know, up to 190 days or 189? Would they continue to be at work in the buildings during those days? It would just be the student days that would be less? Or are we also, you know, if we don't accept this recommendation, it sounds like there is some momentum that way, then what is the last day for teachers and how many days are we going to knock off the teacher year? And are we going to knock it off the same for everybody? Right, there's a, there's a lot of moving parts here. So if, you know, if, if you're thinking, if the board, if you're thinking about not accepting this recommendation, then there is a lot of unwinding and a lot of decision making to be done. Can I clarify that one thing? So, yeah. yeah the, so yes, and this is what I have, I have explained this so many times and I'm clearly not doing a great job because it is so complex. Those days that our students were remote, the AOE officially doesn't count them as student attendance days. In all of my calculations, I count them as days worked by our food service employees because we provided meals to kids even though they were learning from home. I include that for our paraeducators and our teachers because they were working their tails off even as our students were at home. So though all of those count. I did run for you the numbers if you made June 17th the last day across the board. So if you want me to share that information with you, um, it would mean for our elementary, if June 17th were the last day for everybody, it would mean elementary teachers worked 186 days, paraeducators worked 179 and a half, and food service worked 177. And at U32, it would mean that U32 teachers um, worked 184 days, U32 paras worked 177 and a half days, and U32 food service worked 175 days. And, so. and, and just to be clear, just, just to, to reiterate, the teacher year is up to 190 days. The, 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 the para year is up to 183 and food service and other support is up to 180. Sort of, there's a little bit of nuance. In the agreement, the teacher agreement says up to 190 days. 
in the ESP agreement and the food service agreement, the ESP says 183, not up to 183. And food service is 180, not up to 180. So, um, if so the last little, day, little nuance. If the, so if the last day was to be June 17th, then we would be reducing those work years by between six and three days for those different categories? That is correct, yes. Thanks. Okay. Jonas, uh, Ursula, uh, Chris, can you hold on a minute and then yeah, I'll absolutely. let you speak Chris, after you Natasha. And Thank I you. have a comment to make too, just because some of our teachers were not able to join. So if you're okay with this, Ursula, I'm just gonna uh, be trying to get in. So I'm gonna allow this and just read what she has sent just because it's been really hard to get in and I wanna honor that. So uh, Nicole was hoping to to point out that we at U32 would be additionally strained by the fact that three of our administrators will be out for the majority of the final week of school, further straining our already strained resources. So it's just a comment for the board. Okay, go ahead, Ursula, and then Natasha. I have two things. Um, one was seconding Diane's um, Juneteenth comment was that we would be at school through Juneteenth, which we've talked about as a board, especially for next year's calendar and how we might address that this year, or maybe we can't, I don't know. Um, second, I wanna acknowledge the hard work that all of the staff have put in and I get that they're exhausted. And Jen, I know you put a lot of work into this plan and I know we keep talking about the teachers, but I also wanna make a statement for the students who need school as a safe place to be and for meals. Cause that's those five days that they get breakfast and they get lunch and they have a safe place to be for the day. Thank you, Ursula. Natasha? Um, yeah, I a couple things. One, um, I wanted to speak to the tone. To me, the tone was just exhausted and discouraged, just like they put in the letter. Um, I think it just, it reflects, um, you know, where, where our educators are. And as a former educator, I completely understand that. Um, I also, um, when we had talked about teacher appreciation, I had made the comment that as a teacher, what I would have appreciated the most was time. And that's what our educators are asking for. They're asking for time. So here's a chance for us to give them something and show an appreciation in a way that I think is gonna be really felt, um, and felt and seen as, as appreciation. Um, I also wanted to just echo what Lindy said about the remote learning. Um, because our students were, they were there, our educators showed up, and I'm kind of appalled that AOE is not acknowledging that. <laughs> I think that's a failure on their part. Um, and then also, again, with Juneteenth, I brought it up with, with next year's calendar. You know, our, nobody should be in school on Juneteenth. It is now recognized as a federal holiday. So that day is something that we would have to be thinking about anyway. Thank you, Natasha. Chris, I know you have a comment and I want to make a final comment and bring us back because we, yeah. Um, I, Chris? Yeah, I just want, want to clarify that if we went with June 17th, and that would be the end of the year for student, uh, for um, teacher uh, work. Um, I'm assuming there's not days after that the, the teachers would, would be doing work in the building. Is that accurate, Jen, or not? Uh, so contractually, there's always there are two half days at the um, ones at the semester break and ones at the um, ones at the end of the year because we have report cards and end of year take, taking care of lots of stuff at the end of the year that would have to happen. I have no idea if the last student day were June 17th, how we would also and if the last work day for everybody was the same day, I don't know how and when that would get done. Um, so. But that right now, that's that's the way it is stated in the master agreement that one of the professional half days is at the end of the year. And that's for report cards. It's it's it has been for yeah end of year reporting. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, 
So I, I just, you know, I, I'm not going to say the, the tone of the letter, but I, like I said, in my response to, to the executive com committee of the union was just, I, I was, I was a little surprised uh, to, to get the letter because I think we have been creating this culture of openness. I, I was happy to, because it shows that it's safe to have these conversations here. And that's what we want to create, right? A safe space when we can have these conversations uh, together. We have been working so hard in making all of our decisions student center and uh, and what um, Ursula had brought up it was you know as you know I'm one of those crazy people that wears a lot of different hats around the state and I can I can tell you that in the building bright futures and the, the new report for example just for our for what I hear in the regional councils right now is 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 really families are struggling to right they can't find childcare. They, they don't have a, the food insecurity back in 2019 was, you know, 40%. And I know that is not your job or our, or our job at school to address all the problems of society. And I know that sometimes that's what, what it feels, but we are stepping up every single day, right? We're, we're showing up, we're doing the work for our communities and our schools. And, and, and this board has really appreciated, I think, in, in what, and, and support it, what you guys are doing. The reason that we came up with this uh, team, uh, and I think it was collaborative too, Jen is putting the recommendation, but we have been talking all along through the meetings. Oh no, water break, Maine, uh, snow day. We've been talking about that the end of the year conversation was gonna be, was gonna be tough. We have, uh, when we propose, uh, and Lindy and uh, I believe Diane were there when we, when we were brainstorming about you know gifting a, a day or a day of vacation was to honor time instead of a bonus honor that the te teachers will have time right we in teacher appreciation we're gonna have the conversation we have some numbers that have the conversation of what would it look like if we included a small bonus on on that the gift uh, last year we did a thousand dollars for for all the teachers we can't use ESSER funds for for this it would have to come from uh, the general uh, budget right now to to do something like that so we figured that acknowledging and giving you that the time will be a way to to honor and appreciate uh, you too so i know that you noticed that i know that it, I, I don't want that to get sort of uh, unseen by all of the by by the burnout that we're seeing right now i we we hear you i think all of our communities or of our students uh, are, are are tired too and i know that a lot of them would like to not be in school but the kids that need us the most needs us right now so i i would like to i you know and i appreciate jen put a lot of work into this uh, i think our lmc uh, group has been working really well let's continue to have this conversation so if we could with that move on and have uh, a, a motion in place to uh, to accept or not accept the recommendation could somebody make a motion maggie i see your hand do you have a last comment or yeah and i'm just trying to do the research briefly we have a summer school lunch program and I understand that this is a rural district and access can be a challenge but we we do have programs in place and I, I'm not I didn't have enough time while you're speaking to to look and see when that starts but um, I just wanted to acknowledge that we're not um, restricting students who may need summer meals from access and that's an important thing to keep in mind is if that's a a, a significant piece of this conversation. Thanks, Maggie. Sure. I have a procedural question. Yeah. Um, since the tone um, of or the uh, sense of the, the conversation uh, seems to be two different paths, uh, can we have two motions um, uh, floated and then have members vote for motion A and whatever it says, or motion B and whatever it says? I, I guess I don't I don't understand. Sorry, Chris, I'm not understanding that. It's, it, can you? So it sounds to me like there's a, there's some uh, board members um, who uh, will uh, accept 
vote to accept the, the recommendation that Jen has made. And I think there are some board members who would vote to um, have school end on June 17th with the understanding that the staff, teaching staff, will complete the work they need to to close out the school year, even if the end of student days are on June 17th. And what I'm suggesting is that we have both those motions um, or however they're phrased, but addressing those topics put forward and then one after the other and, and have votes for one or votes for the other. Because I, if you- Sorry, Chris, to interrupt you. I think that would be too confusing. Right. I think my, my, my thinking would be either we're asking Jen to go back to the drawing board and come back with a new recommendation or we are, let's just hold a vote of the recommendation that is before us. I, did, I didn't see enough uh, um, division in between <laughs> in, be, in, in between the board. There's been a, a lot of work. I know that teachers want to want to plan to. So I would I would say we could vote up or down the recommendation right now, or we could ask Jen to to go back to the drawing board and come to us with uh, a, with with a different recommendation. You know, if we want her to do more research, Michaela. Um, I mean, I think we would honestly get to the same thing if we just moved to accept Jen's recommendation as it stands, and then if the majority doesn't vote for it, then I agree. I agree. So, are you willing to make Go a motion, McAllen? You are on the mic. So, in that, uh, we can't hear you, McAllen. Sorry. Floor, I will make the motion to uh, accept the superintendent's recommendation on the last day of the school year. Thank you, Jonas. Could I have a second? Jane, may I move to? Yeah, I'd like to accept. Oh, can you hear me? I'll okay, second again. If you can hear so, me. Yeah, now we can hear you, and you're you're second in the motion to accept Jen's recommendation. Okay. So I'm going to call the vote because I think we have had enough discussion. From, from the board. So all those in favor of accepting the recommendation as proposed, it, please say aye. 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 I guess we're gonna have to have some hands because it's, uh, <laughs> so uh, put, can you put your, your little, uh, and I believe we even have uh, check marks now in, uh, yes. So that I can, See everybody. One, two, three, four. Does everybody know how to do the check or is somebody raising their hand? Okay, so I count one, two, three, four, four yeses. Hey, Chris? Lord, you're I, 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 don't, I don't, I can't do it electronically. I have to do it by voice. Yeah, so you, what is yes or no? Could you mind? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to yeah. vote no. You're going to vote what? No. No, okay. It's just With hard all due, to hear. All due respect to Jen, but I'm going to vote no. Okay, so. Okay. And we have how many board members we have? Sorry, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. So we have one, two, three, four yeses and five no's. Four no's. Five. Five no's. Five. Okay. Yeah, I see now the, the a little six. red X work. I see now one more. Yeah, I couldn't see Maggie's and before. Chris makes one, six. Two, three, five, six. It would be seven with Chris. One, two, mm -hmm. five, six, seven. Okay, so so I think uh, Jen, let's go back to the drawing board, uh, talk with the OE and see and and come back with a recommendation for our next meeting, and that would be on for our forum. Yes. Yeah, sure, I would do that. Thank you. Thank you. Jen. All right. So with that, we are already at seven eighteen. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Let's move to board uh, operations and our students have been really patient. So 
this floor. Um, this is Diane. Sorry to interrupt, but I've just had a family emergency come up. So I'm going to have to leave the meeting, but I wasn't sure how to let you know. So um, if I'm able to join back in, I will, but I need to step off right now. Okay. Okay. I hope everything is okay. Go ahead. Um, okay. I'm going to open it up for the flag request on page seven. And I'm going to ask Edith. And is Wilder here too? Yes. Okay, welcome Wilder and Edith. I can't see you, but you've got to be somewhere in here. You have three pages of people, but do you guys mind? Oh, there you are. Okay. Oh, Wilder, do you want to go first or do you want to go first? Uh, I can start. Okay. Um, first off, I just want to thank you all so much uh, for even considering this flag request. Um, the fact that we're even talking about flying a pride flag at a public school uh, would be unheard of in a lot of places across the nation right now. Um, from the don't say gay bill recently passed in Florida to the tragic murder of Fern Feather, a transgender woman right next door in Morrisville, Vermont. Um, hate towards the LGBTQ plus community uh, is ever present all around us. Um, and as a junior in high school, I can tell you personally that it's really frightening to look around and see so much discrimination, um, especially during these hard times. I think that arguably the most important thing for students to learn at U32 is how to respect and value each other. Um, and so flying the pride flag is an important step towards bringing inclusivity to the forefront of our education and will help, help us take a step in the right direction towards making all students feel welcome and safe here at U32. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Wilder. Edith? You're muted. Sorry. Um, hey. Am I muted? Oh, I get maybe, you know what, maybe get your camera up, Edith, and maybe it will help with sound. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there, we can hear you now. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, hi, I'm Edith. Um, I'm a freshman at U32, and I'm here on behalf of the students of GLAM. Um, I'd just like to say something about the Pride Flag proposal quickly. Um, if this proposal is approved, it will be an instrumental step um, at U32 and around the district at educating and protecting our LGBTQ plus students. Um, in my own experience at U32, um, as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, I've heard people say discriminatory slurs, make homophobic and transphobic comments, and a lot of misconceptions. Uh, like I've heard a lot of misconceptions about LGBTQ plus students. Uh, with raising this flag, we hope to create a safer, more inclusive, and more well-educated environment for all students, regardless of their gender or sexuality. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Edith, for being here. And thank you, Wilder, for your very eloquent remarks. And Flora, can I add one more thing as well? Yes, Maya, go ahead. Uh, I'd also like to speak on behalf of GLAM. Uh, as many of you know, there was a walkout led last month and we had at least 200 students walking out in protest of anti-queer legislation and in support of LGBTQ people at school and around the world. Um, and there we introduced the proposal for flying the progress pride flag. And it was met with unbelievable amount of support from people. Um, I know so many students who walk into school not feeling like they totally belong and for them to have a reminder in the form of a flag outside the building that they're welcome and not alone, I know it would mean the absolute world to them. Uh, and of course, just having the flag doesn't mean anything without action behind it. So the Progress Pride flag for us is not only a sign of support for LGBTQ people, but also a sign that we'll continue to work on making our school a more welcoming, inclusive, and accepting place for everyone. So thank you for your consideration as well. Thank you, Maya. Okay, board members, uh, we had in page seven in our packet. We are there any any questions? First, I don't see any questions. 
Could I have a motion? I move it? that we. Oh, um, Chris, go ahead. Sorry. You can't see anybody. I, I, sorry. I, I move that we um, accept the application to uh, raise the grand flag um, and buy it. And the request was for an indefinite period of time, um, but I would um, praise my motion as flying it for the time set forth in our flag raising policy F46. And I was only able to pull the policy up for what that time frame is. I and believe it has to be June, every year. Yeah, reapprove every year is what we have right now. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chris. So, could I have a could I have a second? Second. Okay. So Chris and Ursula and Natasha. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, Chris and Ursula. Yeah. Any discussion? They, uh, Lindy. Mine is um, more about logistics. Uh, where it's being flown or the space on the flagpoles we have it just you know we could approve this but there's logistics involved in these kinds of approvals and um how many flags we can fly how many poles we have those that was my concern a little bit about not questioning the need for acceptance and showing acceptance but more about the logistics and how our approving this affects the people who have to then carry it through. I don't see Stephen here today, but I, I think for the board, I wouldn't worry about the logistics on this. If he has appeared, the, the flag policy is pretty clear about getting approval in. Oh, Amy, please speak to that. Hi, thank you. U32 is prepared to fly the flag um, and uh, we'd be proud to do that if the board um, uh, approves it and we'll figure out the details. Thanks. Thank you, Amy. So be, you know, before we go and vote, I just wanted to thank the, the students to, for being here, Maya, for being part of, uh, of the board and, and bringing awareness to, to the board. I think we are committed to create a more inclusive uh, school for all of our students and we the the board is also committed on learning more about how being part of making our school safer and continue to educate ourselves so that all kids feel like they belong so with that i would look for a vote i'm gonna use the the checks if if that's okay with the board so all in favor please say i or do your little reaction check aye 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 one, two, three, five, seven, eight. Maggie, you're an eye or a check. Okay. Eight. Chris? Hi. Hi. Okay. So unanimously approved for the members that are here today. Thank you. Thank you for being here, guys. Okay. Moving right along. Thanks, Amy, too. And in page nine, we have the superintendent evaluation. It, Carrie couldn't be with us uh, today, so I'm gonna, the, the memo was, was, was really clear. We're gonna get uh, um, all of the information pretty much right after this meeting in the next couple of days, uh, and everybody will have to uh, complete the survey. Are, are there any specific questions about the, the purpose we've talked at length about how important it is to evaluate our superintendent and that we set a system as we move into our next year questions but from board members i don't see any hands up yeah and this was just informational so i'm going to move right along because i don't see any questions and we're already a little behind yeah. So we are going to do student interview uh, uh, interviews for our uh, opening positions. I'm hoping that we were having trouble, but I'm hoping that Martha and uh, and Eric are here. 
Hi, Eric. I know that the link was not working. I hope you got my second email. Uh, Marcia, are you here? Uh, would you mind? It, it looks like she's here. Sir. Okay. Okay. I, I don't see her. Do you mind uh, doing your camera, Martha? Okay. I can. I can see you now. Okay. Um, let me just see if the lighting is. No, that's not very good. Okay, here I am. Oh, there. Okay, thank you for for joining us today. I, I sent a quick email to, hold on one minute. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Sorry, there was a lot of, you know, here. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do some interviews. Uh, I share with the board the same information that I sent to both Before we get started, Floor, we 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 lost your audio about thirty seconds ago. Oh, nope. can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to mute. The, there's just okay. There we go. Eric and Martha, welcome. I'm gonna open it up and let you guys introduce yourself first, and then we'll go over the questions that you got in advance. Uh, we're not going to do this in executive session. I think it's good for everybody to hear mm -hmm. it, what, what, what you have to say. We are going to go into a quick executive session just to deliberate, and then we'll come back out. Uh, okay, after we said, and you will know by the end of the, of the meeting. Okay, I know it's just one position, so we are just delighted that we have two candidates to join your board. <laughs> so uh, go ahead. If Martha, I'll start. Would you just introduce yourself and then Eric? Thanks, Floor. Um, so my name is Martha Tucker, and <clears throat> I've been a resident of East Montpelier for almost 17 years. Um, and prior to that, I lived in Middlesex, and prior to that, I lived in Worcester. So um, I have five children, um, and between them, so um, three are my own children and two are stepchildren. And the children went through the schools in um, Worcester, Middlesex, and all five of them went to U32. Um, I myself am a lifelong educator um, and I've worked in Washington Central Schools um, as a teacher. Um, I had to think for a minute if I'd done any of my administrative work here. Um, so I taught at Berlin and Doty and U32. I think that's it. Um, and I know um, several of you on this um, Zoom call. It's nice to see you again. Um, I am retired from public education at this point and work in therapeutic schools. And I have a grandson who lives in East Montpelier. So um, I'm interested in East Montpelier schools and U32, and um, I have a lot to contribute from my many years in education and my many roles as paraprofessional teacher and administrator. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. Welcome. Eric? Thank you, Floor. Um, my name is Eric Anderson. Um, I have been a resident of East Montpelier now for three years, um, moving from downtown Montpelier up the hill, um, sort of say. Um, uh, my daughter is in fifth grade at East Montpelier Elementary School. Um, and along with my wife and daughter, we have a farm here up on Horn of the Moon Road. Um, and I really, when I saw this position open, I, I saw it as a great opportunity to kind of continue my service to the community. Um, with a lot of places that I've lived. Uh, even when we lived in Montpelier, I was a treasurer for the, um, the uh, MRS, um, sorry, a little nervous, um, for the um, MRPS Pi organization, um, their parent teacher organization that they have over in Montpelier Roxbury. Um, I served as a business, um, a uh, 
a uh, business representative um, when I lived in Maryland before coming up here. Um, so I really do believe in a strong education, both for my daughter and for the community at large, um, and believe that having a strong school system makes a stronger community as well. Um, we have a lot of uh, friends throughout the district, not just in the East Montpelier School District. Um, and I, I want to work for them and with all of you um, to give them the best opportunities that we possibly can. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. So we we had the five questions. Uh, I don't think that we need to go question by by question. If that's okay with the board, that's sort of how we've done it before. You had them in advance, so if you don't mind walking through the questions uh, one by one, uh, each of you. Uh, I don't know who wants to start first. I don't want to take that, but just start with number one, what motivates you to become a school board member and then move right into two, and then we'll move to the next candidate. Um, Fleur, I need to take a minute to pull those up. Oh, unless... I can, I can, I can, I can help. Yeah, I can Thanks. help with, with, okay, with the board. So it, what motivates you to want to become a school board member? And I think you guys talked a little bit about it. So if you have something to add, please uh, go ahead. Well, I would just add that it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, but for many years, um, I was working within the public school system. And even if I wasn't working in the district, I was way too busy <laughs> to take on being a board member. Um, but uh, since I don't work the long hours that I did when I was um, an administrator in public schools, I have more time to devote to something that I've always been interested in. And now that I have a young um family, young grandson coming up through the East Montpelier School, it seems like the timing is really great and it fits in with my um, professional um, kind of stepping down from working as many hours as I used to. So it's great timing. And um, my other reason for wanting to do it is um, that I really have a lot of experience working with boards as an administrator, as a consultant, as a trainer. Um, and I feel like I can contribute a lot to um, being on a school board and have looked for ways to contribute in the East Montpelier community that fit in with all the other needs that my family has and that I've had professionally. Um, and so for all of those reasons, I think this is a perfect opportunity for me at the right time. Thanks. Thanks, Martha. Eric? Thank you. Um, so a lot of what I said in my opening, you know, it, it is a lot of what does motivate me um, to want to be a school board member. You know, having a great education for my daughter, for her friends, for the community. Um, when we bought the farm here in East Montpelier. We didn't buy it to go and figure out another place to live five, down, five years down the road. We bought this as our forever place. Um, as a place for our daughter to have a future in, um, and hopefully for generations to come. And like I said, having a strong education system in the community is really important for a community to strive in and of itself. Um, and having a board that supports our educators um, is extremely important. Um, and, and being an educator is not an easy job. Um, that was one of the things I, when I went to college, I was like, maybe I'll go into teaching. And <laughs> it, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, but I've looked into other ways to work with the community, work um, just with community and, and students and staff through different things. Um, and I want to bring that here to East Montpelier um, through working with the board, um, working with the community. Um, and just helping us all strive and, and work better. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Uh, so for either of you, what are particular skills or experiences that qualify you to serve in, as a school board member? I think you guys have said some of them already. So just that, I'm sorry to be brief, it's just like there's, uh, it's a long meeting and I wanna make sure that we get to know you. So add uh, things that, Eric, do you wanna start so that we, Go back and forth and not. 
Most certainly. Um, so uh, along with what I've already stated, on a professional level, a lot of my positions that I've had have been operations and financial. Um, so one of the things that I would hope to bring to the board is kind of that business, those business management skills, the financial management skills um, that I've had in my professional life um, that could be used as an asset with the board um, and, and with the community, uh, as well as um, management um, skills that I've had my positions from working with nonprofit organizations, most of my positions have been with nonprofit organizations. My first job was an operations manager with the Children's Museum in Washington, D.C. Um, so working with children has always been something I've enjoyed doing. Um, so I really feel that those skills, along with what I mentioned earlier, um, can really be, be a strong asset for the board. Thanks, Eric. Martha? Sure. So um, for those of you who don't know my background, um, I was a teacher for a long time in Central Vermont schools until 1998 when I became the special services director in Montpelier. Um, and that was a role that I held for 10 years before becoming a superintendent up in the Northeast Kingdom. And um, I retired from public education in 2014. But in my role as administrators, obviously, I was present at many, many board meetings and um, was a superintendent and had to work closely with five different boards in that capacity. Um, in addition, I've served on a number of legislative appointed committees and um, have a very clear understanding of some of the legislation that supports or um, complicates the work of schools, um, such as Act 46. Um, I still have very close professional relationships with four other superintendents that I get together with regularly. So even though I haven't had um, the experience of the last, um, how many years is it now? Eight years that people have had navigating the waters of Act 46, um, I'm pretty attuned to what that sounds like, looks like, feels like. Um, I'm a, I'm a, pretty level person with a broad range of knowledge and experience in public education. And that is what I um, feel like I can best bring to a board. I think that's it, Fleur. Thank you, Martha. Yeah, I'm gonna skip number three, which is just how many years you've lived here because we already talked about mm -hmm. how long you've been. Uh, how much time do you, can you give to board service? Either of you who wants to go first. Well, I know it varies a lot. Um, and I would say that I can pretty consistently put in, put in 10 to 15 hours. And I know that most of the time it doesn't require that. Thanks, Martha. Mm -hmm. Eric? And you don't have to be specific uh, the, in how much time. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, the best answer I can give is um, as much time as needed. You know, I can I understand that there are times that there might be an emergency meeting or maybe an issue that wasn't resolved during one meeting that may need to be addressed sooner than the next meeting happens. Or um, so, and then and I have the flexibility in my schedule to be able to do that um, because it really is important. Um, you make time for the, for those that those items that are most important in your life and education and our students and my daughter are, are among those. So. Um, yeah, so as much time as is needed. Thank you, Eric. And last, the last question was really about, are you willing to attend workshops and trainings to learn to become a more effective school board member? Are you willing to further your education? Sure. It comes up, yes. Absolutely. As would I, and I'd look forward to the opportunity. Great. Well, thank you, both of you. I am gonna open up Board members, are there any anything that I forgot or any other questions? Otherwise, if we could move into executive session just quickly for uh, having deliberation. So I'm just and we're back. I see all of the board members trickling in. See, I think I have everybody. Martha and Eric are still here. Okay. 
Patrick. I see everybody. I don't see Chris's phone number. Is Chris with us? Just want to make sure everybody was able to get out of the executive session. I don't see uh, him. Chris uh, is still showing up as an executive session. I'll close the room and then uh, hopefully that'll bring him back within a minute. Thank you, Mark. Okay. I don't see him, but I'm, because of time, I'm going to go ahead and he will, he will join us. It was really, really hard for the board. We have, uh, you know, we have two extraordinary candidates that both bring a, a lot of strengths to being part of our board. So uh, we're going to, we're going to make a motion to invite Eric to join uh, the board. But that doesn't mean that Martha, you don't bring a lot of qualities that the board would be so happy to have too. So we encourage you, this is an appointment just until next March. So, when, and there's gonna be more openings in the board too. So we would encourage you to, to, to apply again and also to stay involved, right? So for both of you, we're really grateful. And, and with that, I'm gonna open it to a board, somebody to make a motion. I move that we appoint Eric Anderson for the East Montpelier board seat. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Ursula. Second by Daniel. Okay. Thank you, Martha and Eric for being here. Uh, I'm looking for a vo uh, all those in favor, please say yes. Or aye. Uh, yes. Aye. 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 Sorry. Yes. I. <laughs> like, Curveballs from you all I, night long, Flora. I know. I'm sounding like the technology. This technology thing is really driving me crazy. It, you know, they've been okay. Any opposed? Hearing none. Welcome, Eric. Uh, thank you, Martha, for being with thank us. You. I think Martha already left, but thank you. It was really hard, but uh, we thanks for for joining. Thank and you. you get you're welcome to stay and continue to be part of the meeting otherwise i'll be connecting with with you our next meeting is the is the first week of uh, may so next wednesday so stay tuned <laughs> right. that, I'll, I'll sit in the background and listen and i thank you all very much yeah um, and you can stay with your and, camera on you yeah yeah that's it and okay welcome Moving. and Thank you. Yeah, we'll do a formal welcome at our next day, uh, our next meeting. And okay, and I'm gonna move on just for timing right now, Eric. But I'll connect with you after the meeting too. Okay. All right. Board mm -hmm. calendar in page 25. Uh, people had a chance to look at the board the calendar that just. For information, we uh, you received a, a color copy <laughs> at our last meeting. All good. Any questions? Okay, it, Jen. I don't. We don't need any action or anything on this. I, it was just for your information. So, uh, just any questions? You received that the last time. Okay. It, the next item is superintendent contract. I just wanted to let you guys know that we received the authorization from AOE to sign the contract. We have signed the contract with Megan and we're all set. So we are pretty, pretty excited. So could you, oh, Maggie, you did have a question. Sorry, go ahead from the calendar or. Yes, from the calendar, but maybe it's in last year's calendar board retreat. What was the final from, I, I, maybe I missed that email. There hasn't been a final. I don't have, everybody hasn't totally. I've been trying, so reminder to all of other board members that haven't fin, fill in the, the doodle poll to, to do. We do not have a, a final date yet. I'm working with a couple of board members, but you will, you will get an, an invite hopefully this week. Okay. All right. Uh, staff appreciation is Diane and Lindy. Uh, do you have anything that you want to report in what we already have? And then yes, go ahead. There was a little glitch in our order, but hopefully 
um, will have some <laughs> appreciation <laughs> arriving. So uh, the order, uh, it's it. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. But there's a plan. I, I believe Jen got some stuff today. Jen, go ahead. Yeah, part of part of the order has arrived. I'll let you know, Lindy and Diane, as soon as the rest of it comes, and we'll figure out a good plan. Okay, because I think our stuff didn't get ordered till just a couple of days ago. Okay, and then I I think I'm gonna wait to talk about uh, a possible bonus after we look at the recommendation uh, from from Jen before we move into that. Is that okay with with you guys for the end of school? Okay. Yeah. So moving moving right along because we still have I'm gonna pause right after this and give everybody five minutes to just go to the bathroom, collect yourselves and we'll come and we'll come back. The last thing that I have there is the VSBA update. I sent most of you, I sent everybody yesterday a reminder of uh, the next webinar for the first year journey. Uh, you know, a reminder again, I know that you get a lot of emails. We try to minimize emails now from the BSBA, but it's easy to miss. Uh, and it's good for new and veteran board members. Uh, and then the second thing why I wanted to have a quick update uh, on, the, on the BSBA is that uh, the resolutions are due June 15. So if there's any resolution in the past years, uh, last year we signed into a resolution from, from other districts, but resolutions are the positions that the association uh, from that are of importance to different uh, school boards, right? So if there's something that you have in mind uh, right now, uh, it, as a, as a group, I can't think of anything that we, you know, in other years we have had some particular uh, issues, but we have until June 15 to submit our resolution, which will mean that we would have to approve it our, our first meeting in June, the latest, right? So you've been getting the emails about that. I don't want to go uh, on and on uh, about that, but those resolutions are the guiding uh, things that the VSBA uses to lobby at the State House. Right. And some of the so if there's anything new, otherwise in your in your booklet that you, you received last year, there's a lot of information uh, there, too. And if you have any questions, just reach out, uh, please. And as soon as we have that uh, yeah, retreat date, we're going to try to get uh, Phil, who was trying to join the meeting, but also couldn't join the meeting from the BS, from the BSBA to be part of that. A presentation to you, the new director of uh, of uh, education for board members, and I think you guys would all really like him. And he has a lot of knowledge on governance. Uh, that's it. So with that, it's twenty eight oh five. Uh, let's come back at eight ten. Take a quick break, and we'll try to power through. I know everybody's tired, so I'm gonna try to. Do my best to move us along. Tired and hungry. Okay. Really, we covered everything. So, moving right into finance. Hi, Suzanne. Welcome. I, we received the monthly reflection, as always, by Suzanne, which is so nice to read, and the fund balance. So, that those are both informational. Do you guys have any direct questions to Suzanne? I don't see any. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move. Suzanne, thank you for being here. I, I'm going to move just because of time and not going to go through the through those two items in in detail. Let's move right into the into the uh, fiscal management questionnaire. Yeah, hi, good evening, everyone. Um, the annual fiscal management questionnaire is uh, completed by the business administrator and reported to the board, who then certifies that they have received it. And this is done every year, obviously, annually. Uh, we ask that the board do that now. The same answers as last year are reported on here with the exception of 
one on the first page. So I went through this with the finance team and made sure that everything was consistent with it. Uh, the only thing that differs is uh, about three quarters of the way down, it says our unopened bank statements delivered directly to the treasurer as received. And that previously had said yes. Um, that is not the case any longer. Statements are downloaded uh, direct from the bank uh, or institution's website. The financial accountant print, uh, prints it out. The payroll accountant reviews it. And then I do a third review of it. So three different people are, are seeing uh, the statements and they're being reconciled in-house, but no, they don't go direct to the treasurer. So that's the financial, and, and this is a state required report, I should tell you. So the auditors will be looking to have this certified when they come visit us in August. Yeah, and the finance committee uh, reviewed this at our, at our last meeting and we went through through the questions. There were no real questions that, I guess I asked one pertaining to cybersecurity and Suzanne was gonna look into that for future years because there was no question on on that but other than that i'm looking for a motion to accept it could i have a motion from any of our board members ursula i move that we accept the financial management questionnaire second thank you ursula and jonah any more any discussion Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing no, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. The next part of, uh, of this is the federal and state grant authorization. This is something that we do every year also. It's on the annual basis uh, for the board to authorize the superintendent. So, I'm looking for a motion and then we'll move into uh, questions. If you have questions for. I'll make a motion. Oh, doesn't matter. I'll make a motion for the board to authorize the superintendent to accept all federal and state grants and to administer and act as the representative of the school district. Thank you. Lindy, and a second? Second. second. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, I'm gonna gonna go to the tone, Daniel. I'm gonna give Daniel since it's uh, the second. Uh, any discussion? Well, hearing none, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, uh, any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Okay. Moving to the next part is the capital improvement and the, the five-year capital budget. I am going to let Suzanne speak about this, even if we are short on time, just because it's just so exciting. This is going to be part of our forum next uh, next week. So uh, there was a full report in the packet. I hope that you guys had time to, to read it, but I'm going to let her uh, talk about it. Suzanne? And Chris, yeah. sorry. And sorry, Chris, <laughs> both of you. They've done a lot of work on this. Very proud. Uh, Chris and Bill and I started meeting weekly uh, in January in order to um, present a draft of a capital plan to the board in order to meet the long-term uh, goal that the finance committee had set this year. And so we're, we're really excited about uh, actually getting a plan written. Um, we wanted to bring it to you tonight to make sure that you have lots of uh, opportunity to read it in full, ask questions of us, think some more about it. And then at the community forum on the 4th, we'll be doing a full presentation uh, to incorporate community feedback. Uh, the finance committee has uh, given some insight to it. And um, I should say a full step here is that Chris, Bill and I met, then we brought the plan to the leadership team twice. Um, the first time they gave us feedback, we went uh, back and revised some things and then brought it back to them. So uh, we want to make sure that this process is a fully collaborative process with lots of people giving feedback um, and that this document is a living document that will uh, be revised uh, 
annually. The plan in here is to revise it annually and for the board to accept a five-year budget uh, every year. So we're really excited about it. And uh, on the page 33 of the packet, it talks about the timeline and the next steps. So like I said, the intent is for May 4th to do a community uh, forum surrounding it. And then May 18th, the board hopefully would adopt the plan. Uh, and then June 15th, we'd come back to you with the scope and budget of the projects for FY24 completion. And that puts us on a really nice timeline to get our bids out and processed and start getting them approved um, much, much uh, earlier than this year. And so we hope that will make us more competitive uh, getting those vendors uh, lined up for the jobs. Chris, do you want to add anything? No, I think you summed it up pretty good. Um, it definitely will help in not getting stuck with only one or no bidders. Um, the earlier we start, the better. So um, this will be this will be good to implement as soon as we can. So, any any questions from from the board members? Um. Um, yes. Suzanne? Yeah, Chris, hi. Um, how are you? Um, on page 38, um, it almost seems like the, um, that does that set up the, basically the review hierarchy of, of various projects? Yes, it sets up and how projects are added. So um, in this document, we presented a five-year capital budget and that hierarchy sets up the process for adding things to that budget. Okay, and does it, um, okay, so the, and is there a particular order to these? Um, I would say it starts with a community person or a student, but sometimes it might start with the department head or a maintenance person. So it might start at any point there. It might start with the building principal meeting with Chris O'Brien, um, but generally it wouldn't start outside of the building, I guess. So then it, it would go from the building to myself just to make sure the I's are dotted and the T's are all crossed. And then we would bring it to the superintendent and the leadership team, then the finance committee, and then the board. Okay, thank you very much for that explanation. Okay, I don't, I don't see any other hands. So first, I want to say thank you to to Chris and Suzanne and to Bill Ford. They're continuing to do work. They're right now involved in doing more work for potential work. I also want to let you know that our students are watching. They, Chris and I got interviewed by one of our students. They really care about the facilities. They really care about our green, our green footprint and what we're doing for the environment too. And I, I really appreciated the, you know, the, how clear the, the, from the communication plan to the process. And I know some of the things here look really linear, but nothing in design or in building is linear. It's, it's more of a circular, you know, like you come with the idea and then you're always coming back to the beginning because you learn more information as you go. So with the, with that, I don't, we don't need to approve this uh, tonight. This was just informational. We're gonna gather information our our uh, community forum next week. Uh, they have been, Jen and Suzanne and Chris have been working in a slide presentation and hopefully some pictures and we uh, they, they got a lot of input from the from the finance uh, committee too and we'll have a simple presentation that allows for community feedback since this is something the community has been looking for 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 years <laughs> so moving thank you Suzanne and Chris the board is appreciative and, and Jen and please tell Bill that we miss him tonight, but thank you. Bill Ford. <laughs> okay, let's move on into policy. So Chris McVay, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Floor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we have a couple of policies up 
for consideration tonight for adoption. Um, starting with, we'll start with C4, which is on page 56. Um, I did not. Chris, we also, we have C7. Yeah, we have C7 for a first reading. Do you want to do that one first before we go to the second reading and adoption? You know what, it said, oh yes, we do. I'm sorry, I just overlooked it on page 52. So we'll start with C7 uh, for our first reading student attendance policy. Are there any um, comments on the edits that were made in our proposed? I know that you can't see everybody, Chris, so I'm just going to say there's no hands up. Okay, thank you. So then we'll move on to C7, which is our student attendance policy. And this is what we're, reading, we're um, looking at for first reading as well. Any questions on our student attendance policy? And these are policies that we um, are adopting from the VSBA model policies, which will supersede the policies that we already have in place on student attendance. Ursula. So I have a really minor question. Um, under definitions, um, it goes for the purpose of this policy, truant shall mean, and it has one quote. Is the word truant meant to be in quotations on each end? And this is uh, like just a copy, you know, like a typo type thank thing. Thank you. There will be a, a second, a closing quote mark used. Okay, hearing no no comments, we'll move on to policies to be um, adopted. Uh, first up is C4, um, our English learners policy. Any questions on this? Hearing none, no hands then up. we'll move on. What, none, okay. So next we'll move on to uh, B5, prevention of employee harassment. No hands so up. Oh, Natasha, Natasha has her hand up. Okay, Natasha. I just, I had a, just a couple um, clarifying questions. Um, sure. Under the training section, uh, it says the district shall implement a reasonable training program to make employees aware of the district's sexual harassment policies and procedures. I'm just curious what's currently in place or what that training program is. Uh, Jen, can you respond to that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, right now, mostly what we have done is uh, training as part of our annual mandatory trainings. So um, every year in the beginning of the year, we have a lot of topics, including this one, that, um, that we Im embed in those annual mandatory trainings, and we provide time for staff members to engage in them. Sometimes we go more in depth than at other times, depending on what the, if there's been a change in the policy, what's coming up for us with students and kids, those sorts of things. But um, at, at, a, at least the sort of basic level, we embed it in annual mandatory training. Um, and then just as a follow-up to that, if I remember correctly, was there, a, wasn't there a presentation to staff by students in regards to harassment? Um, so is, is what the students presented, is that gonna be taken into consideration when creating or adjusting the training for staff, like for next year when they do the mandatory training? Yeah, so this this particular policy is about the prevention of employee harassment. We also have another harassment, right? The prevention of hazing harassment and bullying. Okay. Yes, all of that will be taken into consideration. Those, the students who were involved in the Mosaic group at U32 made a list of about 23 recommendations for next steps. And um, I know the administration is considering those next steps. Okay, um, and then I have one more question if I can ask, or do you wanna? Go to Ursula first. 
It's okay. Just finish in a second. Okay. Um, the other question I had was um, under designated persons. I'm just curious as to who picks who those designated persons are and what kind of training they have um, in terms of being able to do the investigations. So I can, yep, I can speak to it most recently. In general, it's administrators who are designated employees. Um, we, I can't pull it up for you right the second, but we include the designated employees in the training so everybody knows who they are. Um, most recently, we've done a few things. Um, in general, related to Title IX, um, the whole administrative team went through an extensive training with uh, legal counsel back in the summer. Um, also folks in general are principals and or assistant principals. Um, VISBIT usually, I think the Vermont School Boards Insurance Trust offers some trainings on hazing, harassment and bullying. And so they might attend those. And then we have, you know, there's been some work at U32 more particularly um, with the student training that you mentioned and just some partnership with Mosaic most recently. Okay, thank you. Um, and then one last question, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is, um, where it talks about the alternative com complaint process, um, it says employees may file complaints with both the district or and with state and federal agencies. So, so I just wanna make sure I'm clear if an employee doesn't feel comfortable filing a complaint with the district, they can file with the state and federal agencies instead of, or is the expectation that they do both? I don't know the answer to that question, Natasha. I, I'll have to get back to you with that answer in particular. Okay. My sense is that the policy does not preclude um, a, an employee from filing with any other state or federal entity that would deal with a harassment complaint under uh, under statutory law. This is not this is, probably don't need to exhaust this policy in order to uh, seek either state or federal statutory or other remedies. Okay, thank you, Ursula, and then Maggie. I'm going back up to the training. Um, given that this policy is on a fairly inclusive harassment policy, why is the training only for sexual harassment? Jen. Yeah. I think it's. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me let me look at the policy. I don't want to say. Um, I don't know why this, I don't know why the training says only specific sexual harassment training. I do know that the training that we do talks about all sorts of hazing harassment and bullying. So not, it's not limited to just sexual harassment. Um, I think the, I don't know why it's, it calls out only sexual harassment in this policy. This, Chris, I don't know, this was the VSBA uh, model policy. I can assure you that we do training on all forms of uh, harassment, though, on, a, on at least an annual basis. Um, so we could modify it to say, um, just take out sexual and then have harassment policies and procedures, and that would broaden the, broaden the training requirement. I think that that seems like, as far as a policy goes, I mean, I get that the school board or the school and the district is going above what the policy specifically states right now. But it would mean that in the future, somebody could just be like, well, policy says all we have to do is make people aware of our sexual harassment. And so if we want it to be the inclusive harassment, I think it makes the policy more um, complete. I think taking out the word just sexual would, would broaden the policy would broaden the training component of the policy because it would just say the district's harassment policies and procedures without defining it to sexual harassment. Yes. So is there going to, personally, would you like to make a motion to amend the policy by removing the word 
uh, sexual on page 59 under the training section? Absolutely. I move that we make an amendment to our policy C, nope, B5 under B5. training. To, yeah, B5 to remove the word sexual before harassment policies and procedures. Second. Um, any discussion? Actually, I think, Flora, that's your, your job. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was not wanting to interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you, but uh, you got, uh, Jonathan right. was, no. got kicked out too. So uh, yeah, any, any, any discussion? I know that this was up for second, I'm just wanting clarity. This was up for second reading. So if, if we pass this, uh, would we want to approve it tonight too, or do we want to uh, send it back and, uh, and, and check what would As you a, like? Can I ask a policy, yeah. like a procedure question? Yeah. Can we approve it with the proposed amendments? Like, is that a I, thing we are allowed to do? I believe so. I'm just, but yeah, I, 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 I don't know if we want to check in. It's Chris, this is your area of expertise. So, yeah, I, I think we can amend the policy and then, then uh, approve it. Um, that's why we bring it to the board for for uh, discussion and, and change. Um, so yes, we can we can amend it and then approve it. Okay, so all those in favor of the amendment as read by can, Ursula? I, can I, so, I just want with a discussion piece is um, we are yeah. making this change to broaden the training on the, um, broaden the training under, required under the policy rather than eliminate training for sexual harassment. And I just want to make that comment so it's clear why we're editing the policy the way we are. And that's my only concern to check in because there's, you know, there's a lot of people that go through this, through this policy as it is. So I just want to make sure that we're crossing all our T's in, in, in this one. Uh, Jen, you have your hand up. Yeah, Maggie's had her hand up first. Yeah. And then, and then I'm happy to weigh in. Okay, Maggie. So mine um, is a question about um, the alternative complaint process. And it just kind of came to my attention when Ta Natasha was speaking. It reads, employees may file complaints with both the district or and with state and federal agencies. The wording is kind of ambiguous to me. I don't know if that order, it was meant to say and slash or. Or, you know, so that's another potential edit. So Maggie, the or word broadens the the, the options, rather than if you, if you put and, then it it kind of combines them into one entity. The or means you can do either one; gives choice. So can that and be okay. taken out so that's clear? So it just reads, um, employees may file complaints with both the district or with state and federal agencies. It, it, Natasha, just to, to stay clear with process, can we vote in the in the one that Sorry. we have right now <laughs> and, and then move into the new business uh, through Maggie? And then I'm gonna go back to Jen, just if you had a comment of the one that we are voting in right now. Go ahead, Jen. Yeah, I just want to say, in in general, um, we've been we've been counseled by the VSA. If we're going to make substantive changes, that we should vet them through our legal counsel one more time. So yeah. I would just say that to you, if it's if the sexual harassment, that seems to me it's it's part of what we do anyway in terms of the training but if we're going to really wordsmith it my advice would be to consider running it through legal counsel these have been vetted through vsba legal counsel but if we really change them sub substantively we might want to cross check thank you jen i agree with that lindy you had your hand up for this one this this change is different okay so let's say uh, we can we can go ahead and what I'm going to try to do is just have you vote in this change. That doesn't mean that we're voting on the entire policy yet. So all those in favors of the amendment, 
of striking the word harassment, uh, sexual, sorry, sexual. No, right. it, yeah, it, as read by Ursula, say aye. 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 Any, op okay, any opposed? Hearing none, and McKenna has her green check, the motion carries. Okay. Now we can move into new business. Uh, Lindy, is this related to what this Natasha was talking about? Yes. Um, when I opened the VSBA model policy, I think we've just typed it up wrong because um, the way the VSBA model policy on their site reads, employees may file complaints with both the district or supervisory union and with state and federal agencies. So I think ours probably said may file complaints with the school district and we did we weren't putting or supervisory union but the way theirs reads is and with state and federal agencies the or was between school district and supervisory union okay thank you for that clarification oh okay okay boy That's, that makes a lot more sense yeah, a lot more sense so, exactly okay so if we just strike the or then then that should clarify that I don't, so it would I, read, employees may file complaints with both the district and the state and federal agencies. Um, the way it says it is employees may file complaints with both the district and with state and federal agencies. Right. So we should strike or out of our, our yes. policy here. The or okay. was for or supervisory union. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a type. Okay. Yeah. Natasha. Um, so then the way I read that, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that you would have to file with both the district and one of the outside agencies. You would not have the ability to file with just the outside agency. Uh, no, no. I, 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 okay. uh, Maggie, I think just because it's the May file complaints with both. Okay. Um, and so the May is the May is discretionary. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. And then I just have one more question. Sorry. Go ahead, Natasha. I don't see any other hands up. Okay. In the... Um, my other question is, if if there are, if there seem to be, um, and, and and this is a big if probably, but if there seem to be employees that are filing with outside agencies because they feel that the district is not handling the investigation appropriately, will there then be follow-up to whether the people who have been the designated persons are the appropriate designated persons? Does, did, did that make sense? Did I word that correctly? Jen, I'm gonna let you mm -hmm. answer the question. I would say that it's within the purview of the leadership to determine the appropriate designated uh, persons. And if there seems to be a, a pattern that's being established of questioning decisions, then we would re we would explore what training support or designation needs to take place. That's how I would answer that question. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't think we don't need a motion for that. It was really a typo on in there. So I, I I think we could vote just in the one policy and then send this one back to uh, our lawyer or just feel comfortable with removing the word. What do you think? Yeah, uh, yeah I would say I think Jen makes a fair point um, yeah. that uh, removing, just making sure that the removal of the word uh, sexual in, in the training doesn't have unintended consequences, that it's doing what we want it to do, which is to broaden the training. I completely agree. So, so, so Chris, do you want to go ahead and just move the other policy then? Sure. Um, uh, do we, why well, move that we adopt um, policy C4 on English learners? 
Can I have a second for C4? Second. Thank you, Ursula. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. All right. And I, I, let me thank everyone for their um, keen observation and comments. It really helps make the policy a better document. Thank you, Chris, too. And thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Jen. We'll work into the policy. The other members of the policy committee, Lindy, and I'm sure I'm forgetting other names, but thank and you. Dennis. Yeah, and, and, and Amy Molina. And Amy Molina, yeah. We, yeah, yeah I, I, Dennis ended up giving up. He couldn't make the, the computer work, so we'll work on that. And, and I'm not on policy anymore. I'm on ed oh. quality because they meet at 4.30. I can't get there. <laughs> okay. Jonathan in, is on Jonathan. Right. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, um, we're going to move right into the consent agenda. Or am I forgetting any other policies? No, I nope, think we were done it. with policy. Yeah. Yeah. So um, consent agenda, approve the minutes. Could I have a motion of? I move to approve the minutes of March 16th, March 23rd, March 25th, and April 6th, 2022. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, second by Natasha. Is that your hand up, Natasha? Or second it, but I also have a comment. Yeah, okay. So Jonas and then Natasha. Any changes in the minutes? Natasha? My name is spelled incorrectly on the um, minutes for the special board meetings. Banning only has one N. Okay. This how you got that? Yes, thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. So we have all the minutes. Uh, and now I'm going to look into approving the board orders. Do I have a volunteer? Lindy? <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. The million ones always make me choke, but um, I make a motion to approve. Um, the board order for, well, there's two days. Oh, it's a range. For the range 317.22 through 420.22 in the total amount of $1,067,749.07. Thank you, Lindy. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ursula. Any discussion? Any questions? I know for new board members, I gotta say, you know, I know that looking at board orders is daunting and it just seems like so many numbers. A good advice that I got from a friend that used to be on the board too is that, you know, just, you know, look at them, look at, look at the big numbers and something gets your attention and you don't know what it is. It's, there's never wrong questions, right? We are all learning together. And so don't be intimidated by the, <laughs> by the board orders. So all those in favor of approving the board orders, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. All right, personnel. Yeah. Approved new teachers and resignations. We have some updates in there, Jen. I don't know if you want to go through those before we get into the, is that okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I just want to yeah. let you know that um, number seven was uh, prematurely put on this agenda. So we don't have change in position for 22-23. And um, I'll be able to share more information with you next week about that one. So that was the only change. So let's go ahead and, uh, and go through the new teachers. We have four new teachers. I'm looking for a motion. Want me to do it again? Thank you, Lindy. I didn't want to okay. put you in the spot, but here you are. 
Um, <laughs> I make a motion to approve the new teachers for the 22-23 school year. Jennifer Bradley, Skylar Washburn, both at EMES, Matthew Ratcliffe at U32, and Lauren Kiesling at, at the school psychologist. Thank you. Could I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Michaela. If, any questions? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, so approving the new teachers' nominations, please say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Hearing none, welcome to our new staff. Very exciting. It's been really hard to. <laughs> okay, so this is driver's ed. Yay! Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So let's do a little happy dance, even though it's ten minutes tonight, guys. We can do this. Okay. okay uh, move change right in. Into... Yes. There's, there's more. I make a motion to approve the change in um, full-time equivalent for Nicole Schaefer, U32 Social Studies, to reduce the position to 0.6 FTE. And I assume that's for the 22-23 school year? No, that's an ongoing change right now. Oh, okay, so current. For next year and beyond. Okay, so I'll just say it the way it's here. <laughs> I won't put any timing. Okay, could I have a second? Second, that's Natasha. Thank you, Natasha, you saw my voice. It's like I didn't go up quick enough. Okay. <laughs> All right, so all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Oops, sorry. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. So. Again, update on vacancies. Yeah, so for this year, really no changes. I feel like I come to you every time with the same sorts of vacancies. Um, we have some long-term sub positions. We're trying our best to put them together. You heard earlier tonight, folks are just stepping up and being flexible as they can to um, meet these needs and, and be creative and fill vacancies. Um, I will say we, you know, we have now passed out uh, all contracts except our administrator contracts. So right before April break, we got all the ESP and non-bargaining contracts out. Uh, teacher contracts are due by May 1st because we got them out April 1st. So we're starting to hear about um, some resignations. You've approved some regularly. We, uh, or last time, we are um, currently advertising on school spring, ed week, diversity employers and the National Alliance of Black School Educators and um, are looking to ensure that we get a strong candidate pool. So hopefully um, next week, I'll have some uh, more folks to bring to you. Had a couple of requests for extensions, which uh, so far that requires a, a, a request in writing and a conversation with me and um, those are going well and I've granted a few two week extensions for folks who are um, having some extenuating circumstances. Thank you, Jen. And lastly, we had the rice coordinator. Do you, do you want to speak to that or are there any questions from board members and I should have said restorative in school experience coordinator. Can you speak a little bit about it, Jen? Sure, this was the position that we spoke with you all about during the budget process. Um, our hope that we can be uh, both proactive and supportive of our students, uh, socially and emotionally and academically, uh, working to help them get uh, back into class if they're struggling. This is a position that is, I would say, comparable to the Spark Center uh, that we have at the middle school position right now. Uh, and the policy requires that we bring job descriptions your way. This is the standard template now that we've been using. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. And that brings us to an end. I don't be, I don't Natasha believe... has a question. Oh, oh, sorry, Natasha. 
I see I'll be you. Quick, I promise. I know we're almost at nine. Um, yeah. Just based on what the role of this person is going to be, is there an expectation um, that they are coming to us with some sort of like bias or equity training, or is that something that's going to be supplied to them upon, um, you know, upon being hired? I just feel like that's an important component to this work if we're, you know. Yeah, so all of our employees we require to do a, the very basic implicit bias training that um, that's been part of our annual mandatory training. We are additionally thinking about professional learning experiences, not just for this person, but across the board uh, related to the humanity and justice work and, and book groups. Those conversations are in progress right now. Um, and I would think that if this position re requires additional training and support around uh, bias and prejudice, it would be our responsibility to provide that. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. And, okay, any other questions? Do we accept the position? We just usually just inform the board or do we accept the, the job description? Go ahead, Jen. Yeah, I, I would answer that by quickly checking the policy. Hang, hang tight for a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember right now. The policy under implementation says each time there's a new policy, it shall be brought to the board for approval. Okay. So let's accept, could I have a motion to accept the job description? I move to accept move. the job. I'll second then, I'll second. Okay. Thank you, Jonas. Hey, Lisa, do you have that sort of? Yes, I do. Thanks. Okay. All, any more discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Any aye. opposed? Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. So that brings us to an end of our meeting. We have two, uh, you know, we have three items in our future agenda agenda items. I'm gonna, because of time, I'm gonna skip through the board retreat, the global citizenship SLO. What I can tell you is that it's gonna be part of the next uh, meeting of the quality committee on May 4th. And, uh, and then the humanity and justice coalition presentation. I don't wanna skip through that one. That's gonna happen on May 18th. And we're hoping, so this brings a bigger discussion that I'm gonna now try to make an executive decision to move it to my May 4th to have the decision because I want us to have a fresh mind when we make this decision. We're hoping to have this meeting in person. And we had said that we were gonna have our first meeting of the month in person and the third meeting of the month remote. So we'll talk about that. We'll add that to our community forum agenda to have that conversation. Uh, we feel that because there's going to be a presentation and some uh, work that it would be nice for for us as we looked at diversifying the educator workforce to be in person. Uh, do you want to add anything to that, Jen? Sure. And uh, yeah. Natasha, you might know more than I do right now as a co-facilitator yeah. of that crew, but um, one of the three objectives has been diversifying the workforce, and that particular group is working on um, with bringing Alyssa Chen in to do training. And so um, the invitation is extended to the members of the Humanity and Justice Coalition and the board, um, hoping that together we can get some training and then um, it would be the foundation for some rich dialogue and collaboration after that. Yeah, I mean, it was brought to the coalition that it's possible that we would just kind of, we would schedule our meeting at the same time. So there was overlap and Alyssa was making the presentation to both groups simultaneously. And she's done some amazing work. 
<laughs> she, yeah, it, she's done some amazing work. We were supposed to meet today uh, and the coalition didn't meet. The diversifying section of that group, which I'm part of, was going to meet today too, but that was postponed, thankfully, because you know we couldn't be in two places at the same time. Uh, so we'll talk more about it uh, later, but just have that in your radar for, as you start to book yourself. So we won't try to add on, but the presentation should probably start earlier. Uh, so just at five o'clock. So, and and it's not mandatory, obviously, but <laughs> it'll be great to have everybody there. So, any board reflections besides our technology mishaps of today? Sorry, Natasha. The meeting next Wednesday is in person, right? Yes. Um. I just want to say I really appreciated all of the dialogue that happened tonight. I, I just think that that's what makes this board work well, is everybody being able to share their opinions and listen to each other and, and have thoughtful conversations. So I appreciated that. Thank you. Thanks, Natasha. Any other board reflections? Thumbs up from Maggie. Okay, everybody, I look for a motion to adjourn before we put Chris to sleep. Poor guy is falling asleep already. Thank you for staying with us, Chris. You are a trooper and Kara too. And I see Lisa there, Tonya, Eric, thank you for staying too. So a, a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. adjourn. <laughs> I move I'll second. Jonas is motion to adjourn. Okay, so Sam, thank you for being here too. Okay, so Chris moves and Jonas seconds. I don't know, Lisa, what, whichever you got there, Lisa. Um, okay, with that, let's uh, vote. No. All those in favor, please say aye. Oh, oh, it was aye. you, Michaela. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 <laughs> right. Or before you go, can I ask a quick question? Yes. The um, policy, did you guys approve that policy or did you approve the change in the verbiage and then the policy is going to come back for approval? The policy is going to come back for approval. We approved just going back and checking if removing the removing word sexual. sexual before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what I got. Thank you. Okay. Nice to see you, Kara, too. We, we changed the typo and took out the or. Yeah, got that too. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Please, if you hear from community members that couldn't come in, please apologize. And we will see you next Wednesday in person. Have a good, <laughs> good night. night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.